Okay, everybody, so I'm going to pick up on this demo, uh, the second half of the demo. I'll just continue refining this. Um, so the first thing I want to do now as I continue working on this is bring a little bit more um, a little bit more sensitivity to that half tone or a little bit more or reconsider the half tone, let's say. So what I mean by that is I see half tone more prominently transitioning the light into the shadow as the shadow shape moves up into the top planes of the orange. And now that I'm looking at that, I think some of our shadow shape should be higher on the form. So I'm stitching in a darker shadow just to give a little bit better sense of that transition. And I'm going to continue looking at and refining the half tone and the way the half tone turns the shadow into the light. And so finding the half tone on an object isn't really just a one shot thing. You know, I, I put down the half tone or one shot effort. I put down the half tone, then I step back. I ask myself if it's working as it should be. And for me, the half tone needs a little bit more refining. So that I can start to get a sense of the half tone convincingly turning the form. But with, again, without losing the clarity of the light and shadow. That's crucial, keeping that clarity. But having a sense of that half tone, rolling the form around in space in a way that is convincing, is organically convincing. So I'm going to just clean up my shadow a bit. Okay, so I'm going to now move on to, I think I have that shadow shape and the half tone 
working decently right now. I'm going to refine the contour a bit. This stage, I see that the contour isn't quite convincingly reflecting what's happening. So there's a little bit more variety to the contour. So the contour of that piece of fruit needs to be cut in a little bit there. opposite side so this like most like all organic objects this form is irregular On the left side of the, of the form, the contour should be a little bit higher. Makes up a little bit more of our brightest, purest. Warm value, and I'm going to raise this contour just to bring it a little bit closer to the specifics of the object I'm looking at. Start to give it a little bit of that irregular shape or that more irregular shape that it So I also have, I think that the color could be a little bit cleaner on the light side of that form. I'm also gonna work on that highlight so that we get a little bit more of a diffuse highlight.
I'm still in the process of refining this. I want to start indicating some of the complexity of the form. So I'm bringing in a slightly lighter value. to talk, start building the complexity of the overlapping forms that roll around or that roll down towards the surface of the table. I'm just starting to bring in some of some of the smaller forms too, so that we can start to give this orange a some of the attributes of a complex organic form, as much as we're able to do with our very limited means, this very limited palette. But we're able to get some. Maybe we can get some sense. So it's, it's important to remember something I mentioned at the beginning of today's class session, session which is we're we're using an extremely limited palette. We're using what I call the warm, cool palette. So Payne's gray, transparent red oxide plus white. So in some ways, this is essentially a kind of modified. It's a modified grisaille, or we could think of it that way. We've added one color to the grisaille. So we're not able to get, again, I want to emphasize, we're not able to get the intensity any of the colors that we're looking at in the setup in front of us. We're only suggesting relationships of warm to cool. So that's what we're trying to do in our painting of this object. And we're not able to do any more than So we should just remember that. So I'm gonna just articulate a little bit more the interior of that navel. So what do we see? We see small forms. And I'm really just refining this by clarifying 
the shapes of light and shadow on those small forms. So I'm not even, it's not really even an issue of detail unless we think of detail as purely larger and smaller planes. So if we think of detail as smaller planes of light, then I'm dealing with detail. But I'm not dealing with detail in any way beyond that. I'm just finding those small planes of light and asking myself how I can make a convincing depiction of them. So I'm looking at these small planes of internal information on that navel orange. And those planes of light in certain areas, that's a little bit more light. That's a mini highlight here. I just overstated that a little bit. That one too, not intentionally. Go back and revise that. So as I continue to develop these details, I'm still Again, just thinking about small planes of light. I'm not thinking about detail in any way more complex than that. I am now going to continue to just diffuse that highlight into the center light as I see it up in front of me. I'm just gently touching light, a lighter tone, wet into wet, into the value and the color of the center light. I 
can maybe start now using the marks of the brush to very subtly suggest the skin of the orange. I'm not gonna overdo that. That's overdone, it tends to look a little bit tacky. Maybe just a little bit. From this point forward, I'm going to be refining the painting, always continuing to think about this painting as being primarily understood as, or let's, yeah, my painting or my representation of this object primarily as a series of planes in relationship to the light source. That's the way I'm primarily thinking about this. to the plane of the orange is directly facing me, so just to the left of the highlight, or just to the right of the highlight. I want to clarify that a little bit more, a little bit more of a clear sense of this being. plane that's facing me. I'll also start to now at this point, start indicating some of the little kind of accidental forms on the orange. So it, within this half tone here, there's a subtle, subtle indication of a small plane that creates a kind of dimple or wrinkle on the form. So we can, so I'm bringing in just a slightly, I'm essentially bringing in a light value, but it's just a little bit darker than the value I'm using for the center light. And I'm painting that wet into wet. Painting it right into the half tone I have down there. Just to start to give a little bit of a sense of the organic complexity of this form. And so remember, I'm still 
as I bring in details like this, I'm still thinking of that detail as a plane. It's a plane of light. It's just to get a smaller plane of light than those larger ones I started with. I'm just going to soften those edges. Where that little plane of light that seems to have snuck into the shadow side, where that merges into the shadows. Use my dry brush. Just give out a little bit of this texture or a little bit of softness that I see up there. And still just refining the relationship of half tone to dark and core of the shadow to reflected light. And so I feel like my core of the shadow. There's a little bit of a, too much of a kind of graphic stripe. In other words, I think that should transition a little bit more softly into the reflected light. start to make that happen.
underneath, we talked about the intensity of that reflected light under there. I think that needs to be a little bit more intense. So I am going to bring some lighter tone in there just to start making the values between the light and the reflected light just a little bit closer to each other. As we can see happening up on the orange. So the values of the reflected light underneath on the underplane of the orange should not get as light as the light side of the form. And they're running the risk of doing that now. Let's soften those out. Just bring a little bit more intensity to that reflected light. I think it needs it. Just under that form where light is really bouncing off surface that the orange is sitting on. Very strongly bouncing up into the underside of the form. So I'll just feather this lighter reflection. Up into the reflection above. I'm just making sure that that doesn't, that this reflected light is nowhere as light as anything in the light side of the form.
As always, I will continue to refine this, but I think I will leave it as it is. The demo. I think the major elements we're looking for in a painting like this are there. soften some of these transitions with my dry brush. Okay, so that's it for today. And people can email me again with any questions about the assignment. And I will see you all next week.